ladies and gentlemen, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending from where you are joining. I, on behalf of Dhaka Wasa, Dhaka Water Supply and Sewerage Authority, under the Ministry of Local Government, Rural Development and Cooperatives, and with the consent of the today's chief guest, Honorable Minister LG RDNC, Mohammad Tajul Islam MP, I like to start today's webinar. And I'd like to hand over the floor to the moderator of this today's webinar, Mr. Minhas Choudhury, CEO, Drink Well, who is now joining from Dallas, USA. Mr. Minhas Choudhury, floor to you. So just now, His Excellency Ambassador of Nepal has joined with us. Thank you. Welcome, Your Excellency. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Khan. With the permission of the chair, I'd like to start today's webinar commemorating what was a truly tragic day for Bangladesh when 46 years ago, on August 15th, 1975, the father of the nation, Bongobondu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, Bongomata Sheikh Fujilutun Nessa Mujib, and family were brutally assassinated in their home. As we mourn the loss of such a visionary nation builder, we are joined here today to remember Bongobundu and specifically his development thoughts. As we reflect on today's reality of Bangladesh, we'd first like to show you a video tribute to our dedicated visionary leader, Bongobundu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. Kogunete dake de are bundu asman hoilo andhir bundu ami tomar na What a powerful tribute. As we proceed with the program, I wanted to make some housekeeping notes. Our program today is scheduled for 75 minutes. Please remain on mute throughout the program. To ensure an optimal viewing experience, please ensure speaker view is enabled. You can check this by looking at the top right of your Zoom window, where you'll see a view button once you click that, you'll see speaker view and gallery view. So if you click speaker view, you can ensure you're always able to see the speaker. Please do use the chat box to engage with attendees. Time permitting, we will have a brief open discussion led by the chair after the guests of honor and discussants make their remarks. Please note, This event is on the record and is being listed on the talk session. <clears throat> With our dignitaries in attendance today, we are honored to be joined today by our chief guest, the Dynamic Minister of Local Government, Rural Development, and Cooperatives, the Honorable Muhammad Tajul Islam MP. We are also joined today by special guests Senior Secretary from Local Government Division, Mr. Helal Uddin Ahmed, and Chairman of the Takawasa Board, Dr. Engineer Gulam Mustafa. Our guests of honor and discussants include the High Commissioner for Sri Lanka to Bangladesh, His Excellency Professor Sudarshan D.S. Senavaratna, the Ambassador of Nepal to Bangladesh, His Excellency Dr. Banshidar Mishra, Director of the Asian Development Bank's South Asia Urban Development and Water Division, Dr. Norio Saito, and Country Director of AFD Bangladesh, Mr. Benoit Chasse. I'd also like to welcome officials from 
development partners, local government division, Dhaka Wasa, other Wasas, other utilities, local and international NGOs, civil society forums, expatriate societies from Los Angeles, including the Consular General of the Embassy of Bangladesh in Los Angeles, and other expatriates from many other countries, as well as electronic and print media. Thank you all for joining us on this August occasion. I'd now like to introduce our keynote speaker, the Honorable Judge of the Bangladesh Supreme Court High Court Division, Justice Muhammad Rajaul Hassan. Justice Hassan has had a truly distinguished career practicing law. In 2009, he was appointed as a judge on the High Court Division of the Bangladesh Supreme Court. Justice Hassan has worked on a wide range of legal matters, ranging from water supply legal regimes in Bangladesh to cross-border investment and corporate governance in partnership with the World Bank, International Monetary Fund, as well as Asian Development Bank. Justice Hassan, we are delighted you could join us today and share your perspectives on Bangabandhu's development thoughts. The floor is yours. Thank you very much, Honorable Chairman, Engineer Mr. Taksim Ahmed, the Managing Director and the Chief Executive Officer of Dhaka Wasa, the Honorable Chief Guest, Excellencies, the Guest of Honor, the Special Guest, Distinguished Representatives of the Development Partners of Bangladesh, ladies and gentlemen, good evening, good morning, and good afternoon, according to your respect, respective geographical locations. I express my sincere gratitude to the Dhaka Wasa board to confer on me the honor of the keynote speaker before this August gathering assembled here to mourn the tragic incident of 15th August 1975 and to have an overview on the topic uh, if the, uh, of the today's webinar. At the outset of my speech, with a bled heart and with all humility, I deeply mourn the unexpected death of Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, constitutionally recognized as father of nation of Bangladesh and of his family members, his near and dear ones, including 10 years old Russell, all of whom were assassinated at a time nearing the dawn on 15th August, 1975 and a morning darker than the night had begun in the history of Bangladesh. The entire nation was numbed by shock, were perplexed, confused, scared, not even knowing what actually had happened or what were to be done. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests and participants, before beginning of my speech, let, it, let this be made clear that the opinion expressed in my speech is absolutely mine. I don't represent the Supreme Court of Bangladesh or the or government of Bangladesh in this discourse. What I'm speaking about are now matters of history and more importantly, as to how Bangabundhu, the Mujib, and his dream of Sunar Bangla should be understood, judged by his detailed dedications for Bengali nation, instead of any sort of humor or fantasies. A new country on the Eastern horizon, scenario between January 1972, January 10, 1972. The mass uprising in East Pakistan that began in East Pakistan since 1966 had mounted to a hate that, to such a hate that Yahya Khan, the president of Pakistan and a military ruler, had to promulgate legal framework order 1970, LFO in brief, for holding general election based on direct adult franchise. In the said election, held between 
December 7, 1970 to January 1971, the Aum under the leadership of Mujib, own majority seats, both in the National Assembly, 127 seats out of 313, and also in the Provincial Assembly of East Pakistan, 288 out of 300. Thus, the Aum League had acquired a lawful right to form government of Pakistan and to frame a constitution for it. <clears throat> but instead of handing over power to the elected party headed by Mujib, as was required under the provisions of legal framework order, the Pakistani regime had resorted to Delhi Delhi on several lame excuses. All triggers were further increasing the discontents among the people of the Danish Pakistan. At this critical moment, and in the face of unpredictable behavior of Yahya regime, on the 7th March of 1971, the elected supreme leader of, of the people of, of the East Pakistan and of Pakistan, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujib Rahman had given the historic address of 7th March. His address of the 7th March 1971 had brought the entire people of the East Pakistan, of the then East Pakistan under one umbrella, which he was holding as the uncontroversial leader of 7.5 crores of Bengalis. Mujib had by now become the de facto head of the government, particularly in East Pakistan. Every affair in the East Pakistan was being run and uh, run as he would direct. He called upon the Pakistan regime in his address of the 70, 17th March 1971 to withdraw martial law, to take back the soldiers to Barak to inquire into the mass killing that took place during the political upheavals in East Pakistan during that time, and to hand over powers to the elected, elected representative of the people as per provisions of the legal framework order 1970. He even made it clear that he did not want the office of prime minister. He wanted to establish the rights of his people as an alternative. If, he, if his demands were not met, he strongly commanded his people to prepare for war of liberation. With anything whatsoever they may, might have to build each house a fort, he declared that this movement was now a movement for achieving independence and freedom. He had vowed to liberate this, his people. In this way, he had acquired the glorious status of the father of nation. The Pakistan Army Stan Command, in total violation of the legal order created by the legal framework orders, had started an armed aggression after the midnight of 25th March 1971, shot to death a huge number of civilian, unarmed civilians, and thus indulged themselves into war camps and genocide by killing, arson, rape, etc., in the name of Operation Charge Light. Mujib, as befitting of his farsightedness, Courage and acute sense of timing had in no time declared independence of Bangladesh in exercise of his, of his people's right of self-determination as permitted by Article 2 of the UN Charter and as recorded, in the recorded and ratified by the Proclamation of Independence adopted on 10th April 1971. The clock had by now rolled into 26 March 1971. Mujib, the PM-elect, was arrested immediately thereafter was taken to Pakistan and kept in solitary confinement. Thus, Bangladesh is the first country in the world that has shown her awareness about the international legal regime and the sense of proper timing, expediency, and wit to exercise the right of self-determination. Unlike the demand for cessation as were made by the Quebec in Canada in 1980, and unlike the Catalonians' movement of 
or referendum for an independence, independent state in 2017. Both the Quebec and Catalan invite in, uh, initiatives had failed in their respective federal st states, but that of Mujib had succeeded in Pakistan and other federal states by declaring independence of Bangladesh at a moment when it was legitimate and justifiable under Article 2 of Chapter 1 of the UN Charter. Assistance of Mrs. Gandhi's government, the then USSR's veto to resolution to a resolution tabled before the Security Council by the Nixon administration, advocating for, advocating for a cease, ceasefire as the then ally of Pakistan. China's remaining in, uninvolved in the, in the war, stopping uh, armed assistance to Pakistan by UK and the USA at one stage, forming allied force by the 6 December 1971, all had facilitated a quick victory of Bangladesh in her war for liberation. Refugees in several thousands took shelter in India. Relief and aids were provided to the refugees by the government of India as were provided by the specialized agencies of the United Nations. Stan, command of Pakistan, Pakistan Army, Eastern Command of Pakistan Army had ultimately surrendered on 16 December 1971 after nine months of war and Bangladesh has emerged as an independent country in the global landscape with the loss of owns left by the war of liberation, by the bloody war of liberation. Pakistan ha had to set free Mujib after nine months in, in a prison on the 8th January of 1972. From Pakistan, he started for London on the eighth evening, and on the eighth of evening, he reached there. He reached in London. On 10th January 1972, Bangabundu returned to Bangladesh via Delhi. The post-independent era between 10th January 1972, that is the return of his the return of Mujib to his homeland to 15th August 1975, when he was brutally assassinated. Filling up the legal vacuum and development of the infrastructures. No government can work in a large, in a legal vacuum, nor without any roadmap for taking initiative or for achieving her development goals alongside making and enacting of fundamental and other laws from and within the limit of which it will derive the powers to govern and manage the newly born state. The first five-year plan FAP was being prepared simultaneously as the essential roadmap for achieving economic goals, developments and infrastructural aspiration of the war of the of the of the war rate Bangladesh. This five year, first five year plan was not only a prescription for economic emancipation and attaining self reliance of the hitherto exploited people of Bangladesh. It was all, rather, it was also a prescription that could guide all those new countries in other parts of the world who have liberated themselves from the clutches of the colonial rulers after WOW2, World War II. The first five year plan was a huge task. It left no areas or sectors of economic concern, nor any contingencies out of its focus and ambit. Here, Bangabandhu had drew his dream to build a Shonar Bangla, Golden Bangla, in a state hard hit by the devastating cyclone of 1970 that killed thousands of people in the South destroyed a huge livestock, crops, assets, and ecology, resulting in immense human miseries and ac acute food, food shortages. In a and in a state bearing the owns of 1971 war, when foreign reserve being in its bottom uh, with war infrastructure, infrastructure and 
disrupted communications with no production due to stoppage of works, trade and commerce, and due to stoppage of works in mills and industries during the war. Then with the unpredictable flood hit of 1974, coupled with PL 480 crisis, further aggravating the acute shortage, of, shortage in food supply chains and with a desired administration. In such a situation, the first five-year plan was prepared and approved on November 1973 with a forward signed by Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, PM of the government of PRB, People's Republic of Bangladesh. In the forward, in the forward to the first five-year plan, the great leader had, amongst other, written that it is unusual for a newly liberated country to prepare a five-year national development plan within such a short time. Nevertheless, it was decided to launch the five-year plan at an early date because the government felt the urgent need to provide a sense of direction and determine, and determine the order of priorities within the framework of which coherent and co consistent policies and programs could be formulated. From the 6th June 1966 to 16th December 1971, he got a clear five years time to in attaining the political independence. But he got less than two years time from November 1973 till he was brutally assassinated on the last, uh, on, the late, on the late night of fateful 15th August 1975 to actualize his dream to build a Shonar Bangla for his people as he had portrayed in his first five year plan. No one but Mujib's shoulder was too broad and strong to bear such a burden, such a huge burden of the war-wrecked Bangladesh as the history shows. Almost in no time after his return to independent Bangladesh, he had promulgated President Order 16 of 72, Bangladesh Abandoned Property Control Management and Disposal Order 1972, under which Bangladesh had acquired a huge number of mills, industries and assets left by the citizens of country that was engaged in war against Bangladesh in 1971. He had thus saved all, the, all these properties worth billions during the aftermath of 1971 war and thus added a huge wealth on the credit side of the balance sheet of Bangladesh, thereby making Bangladesh currency a comparatively, comparatively stronger one in the global market. But for this president order of 16 of 72, all these assets could have been lost to Bangladesh. He then, as per provisions of the president order of 27 of 72, the Bangladesh Industrial Enterprises Nationalization Order 1972, nationalized all these industrial enterprises, put them sector-wise under several corporations, thus undertook to keep in employment, billions of workers after the war and had made the state take responsibility to make all the damaged and abandoned mills and industries repaired and go to production. <coughs> production. Besides, his family planning program was also a success story. Five gas fields were purchased by Bangabundu on 9th August 1975, just six days ahead of his assassination from Shell Petroleum, a US company at, at a cost of 4.5 million per pound. That is about Bangladesh Taka, 170 million. These were Titas, Bakharabad, Habigans, Rashidpur and Kailastrila gas fields. And all these were nationalized as well. In recognition higher off, on the 9th August 2010, the government of Bangladesh has decided to observe 9th August each year as the National Energy Security Day. These five gas fields are now contributing about 33.44% of the total gas explored per day.
when he was about to about to take an U turn from the shocks and aftermath of the war of 1971, he was assassinated to halt the progress of Bangladesh and to break his dream of a Shonar Bangla. Today's Bangladesh economy vis-a-vis -vis the Mujib's dream of Shonar Bangla. This first five-year plan of November 1973 has given the sense of direction, as he had said, towards the paths of development for, the, for this new nation. It is apparent that the sense of direction given in the first five-year plan has been aptly picked up by the government of Sheikh Hasina, the Honorable Prime Minister of Bangladesh. During the Last 10 years before pandemic, as has been put forwarded by the government with empirical and accessible data, Bangladesh has experienced a steady growth in the GDP and has attained commendable targets in almost all economic indicators. During the pandemic period as well, 20, 2020 and 2021, Bangladesh has maintained its growth in the GDP, though below 8.15, attained in, the, uh, in 2019. While many countries and even larger economies showed negative growth during the pandemic period 2020 to 2021. Life expectancy, literary rate, Unemployment rate, per capita income, a foreign direct investment, uninterrupted power supply, atomic energy based power project, atomic energy based power project, discoveries of new gas fields, extensive and pervasive digitalization, bumper production in agro sector, and food sufficiency all are positive indicators. Besides mega projects like Pabda Bees, is in the offing. Many four-lane highways, many flyovers have been built and are under construction. Metro rail project is visible. Recently, the government, government of Bangladesh in the ECNAC has taken decision to replace all Bailey bridges phase by phases. Besides, the decision has also been taken to create a 100 megawatt solar, pa solar park at Madargons, Gamalgons, while the 28th gas field has, has been discovered recently by the BAPEX in Jackie Guns slate. In line with the vision of Bangabandhu, the present government of Sheikh Hasina in Bangladesh has, like many other fundamental sectors, also made a tremendous breakthrough in water sector. According to our development partner's estimation, during the last 12 years period, the Dhaka Washa has, under its turnaround around program, converted an almost dysfunctional utility into one of the South Asia's leading water supply and sewerage utilities. Congratulations to Dhaka Wasa. All development partners of Bangladesh, since after our liberation war, liberation in 1971 till today, have reposed a great trust in us and have always been found standing beside Bangladesh, helped in building roads and bridges, other infrastructures, and providing technical supports and aids in all important sectors. A good number of EPZ export project zones have been established by the government of Bangladesh as well as by some of our development partners.
Bangladesh has become a new regional hub of investment and financial focal point. And the law in Bangladesh allows and protects all foreign investments, as well as it gives various kinds of concessions, facilities, incentives, and priorities in, in the investment and export sectors. Distinguished guests, participants, and audience, how near or how far the two days realities are from the development thoughts of Bangladesh is a question left to all of you and left to all concerned and responsible to build a solar Bangla as dreamt by him, the father of the nation. Honorable Chair, Honorable Chief Guest, Excellencies, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and gentle audiences, ladies and gentle, gentlemen, thank you very much for giving me a patience hearing and opportunity to share my views on the topic. Thank you very much and have a nice time and stay safe with all your loved ones. Thanks again. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you, Justice Hassan, for thank such thought-provoking remarks. Now, I would like to invite our guests of honor and discussants to share their views. I would first like to invite AFD Bangladesh Country Director, Mr. Benoit Chassé. Mr. Chassé, the floor is yours. Thank you and good morning to everybody. It's an honor for me to be able to speak on behalf of AFD. Um, I will start with an anecdote that uh, reflects what I felt when I was in France. You would be very surprised by the level of ignorance of the French people towards Bangladesh. If you talk to many people in, in France, they would think of Bangladesh being a country that has a lot of uh, natural disasters and uh, still having people starving and facing uh, death. And they have the image of Bangladesh that was uh, carried, conveyed uh, at the time of uh, the struggles after independence. And this has not evolved. And this allows me to, to realize when I see in Dhaka and in Bangladesh, the, the situation to realize the amazing progress that you've made through those 50 years of, uh, of, of uh, time. And this is uh, really the image that France has is definitely not the reality. If we look around, uh, we see so many entrepreneurship spirit, so many infrastructures built. We see all building constructions around us. Uh, we see all those infrastructures that were built and all the numbers are there to confirm that uh, Bangladesh is uh, seeing a rapid and amazing development. All the annual economic growth is there. So uh, personally, and from my background, because I'm married to an Indonesian lady and I lived in Indonesia, I would compare Bangladesh to Indonesia, if I, you may allow me to do that. And I see the same rapid growth, uh, everything's possible and, and, and vision and, and, uh, and all those uh, efforts that are, are carried out. Of course, you're a little behind in terms of luxurious malls, but uh, to the credit of uh, Mr. Taksem Khan, you're way ahead of Indonesia in terms of water supply and sanitation. And my questions would be why uh, Bangladesh did see such a rapid uh, development? And I will humbly share my personal thoughts, although uh, it, you may not take it seriously because I'm new here and I have a lot to learn from you and from Bangladeshi culture. But uh, I think it started with the father of the nation. His, uh, his charism, his determination, his commitment to the, to the development of this country, his perseverance 
made a big difference. And I believe I can see this is reflected today in the government and the head by the prime minister. And I would highlight three pillars that I believe are key to the success of Bangladesh. The first one is the stability. There is political stability in Bangladesh and this is a key factor to the development of the economy. The second is uh, there is a vision. There, are, there is a strategic planning. There are many plans, development plans. And this is crucial. You, even if you have stability, if there are no vision and no development plans, you cannot move forward. And thirdly, maybe the most important, the human resources. From my experience, I see very qualified people at the government and very dedicated. Dedicated to their country, dedicated to their government and their prime minister. And that makes a big difference. Having motivated and qualified people makes everything happen. So for me as AFD, it's a privilege, I would say, for AFD to take part in this development. We are still a small uh, development partner compared to others, but we were able, because of those plans, to, to double our financing over the last 18 months. Now we are reaching 1 billion euros, and we have a large perspective for, for the coming 18 months by an additional 500 million euros. So why is that? Well, as I said, because the plans are here, the DPPs are there, the project directors and the PMUs are set up. Because also, because of the stability, we can develop a long-term commitment with all the implementing agency and ERD and also because of the efficiency of the government, we've been able to develop so rapidly as well our, our activity plan. So I would like to congratulate uh, the government of Bangladesh for this amazing and astonishing development of achievement over the, the last 50 years. I would like to thank the government of Bangladesh for making AFD be a part of it and as a development partner. And I hope that this uh, partnership will remain in place and will develop for the benefit of uh, the population of Bangladesh. And I wish the government to pursue its goals and its commitment to achieve the goal of developing Bangladesh. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chasse. I'd now like to give the floor to ADB South Asia Urban Development and Water Division Director, Dr. Norio Saito. Dr. Norio, the floor is yours. Thank you, Minhaj. Uh, Assalamu alaikum and a very good morning. Uh, Chief Guest, Mr. Tajul Islam, Honorable Minister, Keynote Speaker, Justice Reza Hassan, Honorable Judge, and Special Guest, Mr. Helaluddin Ahmed, Senior Secretary, Dr. Golan Mustafa, Chairman of the Dakawasa Board, Mr. Taksim Khan, Managing Director and CEO of Dakawasa, distinguished panelists, guests, ladies and gentlemen. Again, a very good morning to everyone. It's my great pleasure and honor to join this webinar today to remember the development thoughts of the father of the nation. First, let me congratulate Bangladesh on its successful and impressive development since its independence in 1971. Bangladesh has sustained robust economic development, averaging 6.7% over the last 10 years, which is among the fastest growing economies in the world. National, national poverty incidence also decreased in an impressive manner from 48.9% in year 2000 to 20.5% in 2019. A prudent macroeconomic management maintained the macroeconomic stability, and Bangladesh made noteworthy progress in reducing infrastructure deficits. So the country gained lower middle income status in 2015 and met the United Nations eligibility criteria to graduate from the least developed country status, with graduation to be effective in 2026. So they are full of impressive stories in developing the country. Asian Development Bank, or ADB, has been supporting Bangladesh since 1973 and established a field office in Dhaka back in 1982, which is actually the first field office of the entire ADB. 
So this demonstrates the importance of Bangladesh for ADB and the strong ties between Bangladesh and ADB. So ADB has been very honored and pleased to be a longstanding development partner in Bangladesh. Oh, since 1973, ADB has committed loans, grants, and technical assistance worth $28.6 billion for Bangladesh. I wish to commend the government of Bangladesh for effectively and efficiently utilizing ADB's assistance for its economic and social development. Now let me move on to the water sector. So water supply services in the country, particularly in Dhaka, have also seen significant improvement in the last 10 years or so. Dhaka Water Turnaround Program, led by Mr. Taksim Khan, literally turned around Dhaka Wasa from a loss-making entity into an efficient and client-oriented water utility. Now, Dhaka Wasa is regarded as one of the best performing water utilities in South Asia, and other utilities in the region are trying to emulate its success. I feel very honored to say that ADB has been a part of this journey by supporting Dhaka Wasa since uh, 2008. Personally, I have also been involved since 2011 for, for these uh, this efforts. So notable achievements by Dhaka Wasa include a 24 seven water supply service delivery to essentially for the entire city, including most of the low income communities, reduction in non-revenue water from about over 40%, now down to about 20%, improved customer services, adoption of digital technologies for efficient operations, even under the pandemic, and also regular tariff adjustments to ensure full operation maintenance cost recovery and also partial co capital cost recovery. So together with other development partners, including Agence Frances de Development or AFD, who is just uh, you know, presented now, and now ADB is partnering with Dakawasa to develop efficient water treatment system using surface water to make water supply in Dhaka climate resilient and environmentally sustainable. So challenges are still ahead, particularly in improving wastewater management. And ADB has been actively involved in supporting Dakawasa in preparing a sewage system development project, which is going to adopt state-of-the-art technology, maximizing resource recovery. So we look forward to further collaboration with Dakawasa to improve water sanitation and hygiene services in Dhaka to make Dhaka a more livable city. In the end, let me congratulate the government of Bangladesh once again for the remarkable achievements in inclusive economic development. And ADB stands ready to provide all possible support to further advance development agenda of the country. Thank you very much for having me here today. Thank you, Dr. Minhaj, you are, you are muted. Minhaj, you are uh, muted. Sorry. Thank you, Dr. Noria, for your comments. I'd now like to invite the ambassador of Nepal to Bangladesh, His Excellency, Dr. Banshidar Mishra, to give his remarks. Ambassador, the floor is yours. Thank you, uh, Mr. Minaj Choudhury, Chairman of the Session Engineer Takshim Khan, Chief Guest, Honorable Minister Muhammad Tajul Islam MP Shah, Special Guest, Mr. Halauddin Ahmad, Engineer Gulam Mustafa, Chairman of the Hakawasha. Keynote Speaker, Justice Mohammad Rejaul Hassan Sir, Honorable Judge, High Court Division of Supreme Court. His Excellency of Sri Lanka, Professor Sudarshan T.S. Senevatra. High Commissioner of Sri Lanka, development partners present here today. At the outset, I 
express my heartfelt tribute to our great leader of not only Bangladesh, South Asia, and a visionary leader, the father of nation of Bangladesh, the founder of Bangladesh, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, a dreamer of Sonar Bangla. That is now being realized by her able daughter, Honorable Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. Really, Bangabandhu was not only a visionary, visionary leader, he was uh, a light of hope of Bangladesh. And a very inspirational and charismatic leader. He not only pioneered the independence of independence movement of Bangladesh ever since his youth. He was a well organizer, a person of determination and courage, and a stout freedom fighter. It was Bangabandhu's incessant struggle that gave birth to Bangladesh. Hey, hey. He sought hey, hey. hey, hey. hey, hey. hey, hey. a leadership and untired struggle. And actually, he, it is his vision that lifted Bangladesh after liberation also. There was a huge, as we heard in the keynote speech also, that there was a quite a situation where many countries, many leaders were seeing Bangladesh, the how it goes and whether it will be a successful country and will further develop because there was a natural disaster, there was hunger, there was deep chaos, but with the, with the determined leadership of Bangabandhu, Sheikh Mujib Rahman, dreaming Sunar Bangla, moving on the path, now we can see the Bangladesh is not only developing, all round developing, but also become a, burning example of development and how the upper the challenges can be transformed into opportunity. Bangladesh is an example now for ours. So we all feel very proud of our Bangabandhu and we all feel that he was our leader also, being a very close neighbor, Nepalese people who were all with the sentiments of the people of Bangladesh. Even few people came to fight in the liberation war. When Bangladesh was liberated as independent country, we also felt a winner. We also enjoyed the uh, celebrations. And we are always together with the success and any events with the Bangladesh, and so is the Bangladesh people. Actually, that was the king's regime. Otherwise, we could have been first to recognize, but we became seventh. At that time, there was king's uh, dictatorship over there, but people were all with Bangladesh. But even with the pressure of people, uh, Nepal became seventh country to recognize within a week or 10 days. And since then, we are very close and cordial friends, neighbors, we feel sentimentally related with each other. So we share all the success and everything with each other. And we are helping each other in a time of need. Bangladesh stood with Nepal in 2015 earthquake and in other events also, even this pandemic, Bangladesh has supported Nepal a lot. And in 1974, when there was a uh, big natural disaster and other things, Nepal also helped with 15,000 tons of rice at the time. But these are the things on the people level also. In every level, we are very much close. 
So today when we remember Bangabandhu with a deep tribute and full of feelings in the heart, we see Bangladesh in the path of development and now the determination of Bangabandhu really being true with the efforts and with the labors of all the Bangladeshi people and uh, uh, the officials, the bureaucrats, and all the Bangladeshis all around the world. So I thank you very much with my these words. I pay again the tribute and thank you the organizer, especially Mr. Takshim Khan, which, who has changed this uh, actually uh, the scenario and uh, had uh, raised hope that we can do with the supplying a drinking water, not only that, establishing a very good a model network as we heard uh, by our development part partner just before. So I thank you all the organizers, especially Mr. Takshim Khan and all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ambassador Mishra for your remarks. It is now my pleasure to introduce the High Commissioner for Sri Lanka to Bangladesh, His Excellency, Professor Sudarshan D.S. Senevaratna. Your Excellency, the floor is yours. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Assalamu alaikum. Greetings from Sri Lanka. Greetings from the Sri Lanka High Commission in Dhaka, Bangladesh. My gratitude and sincere thanks to Asa for the kind invitation and engineer Tashim Khan, whom I came to know as a friend, CEO and MD of Asa. Water is the source of life for our countries and to everybody. And for Vasa to initiate this meeting, I think it's symbolic. Honorable Minister Razul Hazim, His Excellency, Excellency Bajidar Mishra, Ambassador of Nepal, Mr. Golam Mustafa, Chairman Waza, all distinguished partisans of the panel. Today we remember the day of mourning, but you must understand this event as a dialectic past in the present and present in the past. From a tragedy, we look at what Bangladesh has achieved in the present and its futuristic vision. Walking down memory lane, my association with Bangladesh and with the memory of this great person, Sheikh Mujibur Rahman Bangabandhu. It goes back to 1971, when I was a student at Delhi University. I met a whole heap of young students who were fleeing from Bangladesh, escaping the repression. And with them, I was an undergraduate. I joined them having this wonderful exhibition unfolding the brutality of the repression that was carried out. We had this big exhibition at the Vigyan Bhavan in New Delhi. That was my first introduction to Bangladesh. And you know, as much as it was a tragedy, but I come back as an ambassador for my country, to this country, as a friend, as a kinsman. Uh, down this memory lane, after touching uh, the father of the nation, I started rediscovering him through the volumes gifted to me by the Honorable Prime Minister, Sheikh Hasina. Reading through these volumes, I realized how little I knew about this wonderful human being. And specifically mentioning human being, a human being with vision, compassion, understanding, loving kindness and great visionary and statesman. In 1971, after this tragedy, what we saw was joy, then again, the massacre, the tragedy, and at present, 
when I see what Bangladesh has achieved, it is amazing. It is amazing. This great lady, the daughter of the great statesman, has safely guided Bangladesh to the threshold of being a developed country. As a kinsman of my brothers and sisters of Bangladesh, from 6th century BC, we had an organic and kin relationship with Bangladesh. We always knew in our ancient chronicles as Bangladesh. So talking about Bangladesh is nothing new to us. It's in our blood, it's in our history. We had connected that historical continuity and our commonalities with the new era. And by next year, we are celebrating 50 years of our diplomatic relationship with Bangladesh. Our two countries are at the two ends of the Bay of Bengal, at the two ends. Our checkered history of good and the bad times, but our resilience to rise from tragedy is epic from natural disasters, oppression, terrorism, we rose and rose again from that destruction. We are firmly connected with the larger family of the Sark, with Bimstek, the Bay of Bay and Gangal initiatives and Iora. We firmly are entwined with each other caring for each other and developing into the next era hand in hand. Sri Lanka has invested over 2.2 billion US dollars in Bangladesh, nurturing the economy and this country. We consider it as a pride. Sri Lankan professionals have contributed to the development of this country and this country has embraced them with great affection. The new initiatives under the proposed PTA, preferential trade agreement, cross the coastal shipping, preferential berthing for our ships in our harbors are wonderful achievements. The sharing of knowledge, sharing of security information, endowment of scholarships to our, what we give each country, training security person. It's a long lead of shared development and sentiments of solidarity. When I come full circle on the compassion towards people, as a historian and archaeologist, I recall the words of Emperor Ashoka, who mentioned his inscription, 3rd century BC, Save Munisa Pajaman, all people are my children. These are the exact words Manga Bandhu told the people to a new era. In fact, I like to end my very short presentation with from the words actually what Tagore recorded but expressed through this great statesman, Bhagavandu. In his poem, Heaven of Freedom, Tagore inscribes, where the mind is led forward by thee into ever widening thought and action. Into that heaven of freedom, my father, let my country awake. Bangabandhu will take solace that his country is awakened and has risen under his loving daughter. Honorable Sheikh Hasim. Thank you very much indeed for giving me time to share these sentiments with you all. All blessings. Thank you, High Commissioner Sanavaratna, for such an excellent ending parallel with Rabindranath. I would now like to invite everyone 
to turn on their videos as we would like to take a photo of this August occasion. I would particularly request the speakers of the event to please turn on your video so that we can take a snapshot of this gathering. Okay, I request everybody please uh, put on your video. Uh, we have to take six snaps because we have uh, 223. It doesn't cover in one screen. It covers in total seven screen. So it will be uh, better if you take it earlier because uh, uh, some of participant is not uh, visible. <laughs> sir, sorry. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, that's okay. We will we'll not take much time. Uh, we can continue at the same time. Just one minute, sir. Yeah, they're taking the photographs at the same time. I'm also taking one. Okay. Is it done already? Mustafiz? Okay. Okay, Mr. Binhat, we can go back to the program. Great. Thank you so much, Mr. Khan. I'd now like to invite our special guests to make their remarks. So first, I would like to introduce Dr. Engineer Gulam Mustafa, Chairman, Dhaka Wasa Board. Dr. Mustafa, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Mr. Minhas Choudhury. Can you hear me? Yes. yes we can hear you. Uh, thank you. Uh, Depending on from where you are attending, good day, good morning, and good evening to you all. Honorable Minister, the chief guest, chief guest Mr. Muhammad Tazul Islam MP, respected keynote speaker, Justice Muhammad Rezaul Hassan, and respected senior secretary of local government division, Mr. Hilaluddin Ahmed. I am, I am privileged to be here for a discussion webinar among the mentioned very high level guests and our esteemed discussants, Professor Sudarshan Senaviratna, High Commissioner of Sri Lanka, Dr. Banshidhar Misra, Ambassador of Nepal, Mr. Nariyo Saito, Director of Asian Development Bank, and Mr. Benoit Tashe, Country Director of AFD. The topic of discussion in this webinar is, is Development Thoughts of Bangabandhu and today's reality of Bangladesh. Today is August 14. Only a day before that darkest day in our history, when on 15th August 1975, the founder father of our nation, Bongo Munzu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman was killed brutally along with most of his relatives and family members by enemies of our liberation war of 1971. I recall Bongo Bonzo's memory of my unique opportunity to meet him first time in 1969 and discuss about my future career to become an engineer. I feel proud of this meeting with Bongo Bonzo in his residence in Dhanmundi Road number 32. This happened just before my admission to the University of Engineering and Technology in Dhaka on completion of my higher secondary education, when, I, when asked what should, should be my choice for my future career from two options, physics department of Dhaka University and engineering university, he replied, I quote, to build a prosperous Shunar Bangla, I will require many engineers to help me. And I suggest you get yourself admitted to the engineering university. That's why I feel proud to be an engineer and to work for development of Bangladesh under the leadership of Bangabandhu's daughter, Honorable Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. What I want to emphasize from this, this story of my personal life is that the Bangabandhu was not just trying for political emancipation of Bangladesh and Bengali nation from the hands of Pakistani rulers. But in his mind, always was 
finding ways and means to develop this country for the benefit of common people. That was a difficult time in the just liberated independent Bangladesh. The economy was completely damaged during the nine months war and there was no resources to win over the situation. Also, many of Bangladesh and was hostile to development In an extremely difficult situation, Bangabundhu was working day and night. The whole the wheels of independent Bangladesh. He could have succeeded if he would have gotten some more time. The needs of Bangladesh killed him with his family members on August, on August 15, 1975, to stop forward march of independent Bangladesh towards the goal of secular democratic people's republic. He took, it took a long time for this nation to come back again to the path of Bongo Bundu's vision of Shonar Bangla. The country at the moment under the leadership of his daughter, Honorable Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, is struggling to build a prosperous Bangladesh that Bongo Bundu thought about. Our keynote speaker, Honorable Justice Muhammad Reza Ul Hassan, has narrated the long history of Bangladesh from its founder, Father Bangabundu's heart and soul endeavor in early 70s to that of his daughter, Honorable Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina's government as on today. The country under her leadership is moving forward towards achieving her targeted goal of developed Bangladesh in 1941 and all key performance indicators have achieved so far show that the country is on the right track. It will continue to be so in case the government can come out of the present uncertainties created by COVID-19 turmoil in economy and social life. Dhaka Vasa started its new journey To keep with PM's program of Digital Bangladesh, Dhaka was started its turnaround program in 2010, aiming at supplying drinkable water to millions of Dhaka residents and also provide modern sewage system. Heavy re reform in all sectors of WASA's activities was required, and a lot has been done, and remaining is going on at present. And we are not listening you. To the first scenario of inefficient and thoroughly corrupt WASA administration, not we are now producing more water than needed, and its quality is definitely up to the drinking level, if not polluted at households for their own fault. Apart from fulfilling daily needs of 18 million Dhaka residents, Dhaka WASA's performance indicators at present, including billing, collecting bills, receivable turnover ratio, operating ratio, and system loss numbers, all indicate that it is one of the best water utilities in the region. And as per ADB evaluation, it's the best water utility of South Asia. We are proud of this achievement, and we understand that we have still to go a long way to meet the needs of prosperous and developed Bangladesh in future. Myself is fortunate enough to be part of this sacred journey as the WASA board chairman at the start in 2009 to 12, and again at present, and I am confident, inshallah, will reach our goal together with the assistance of our development partners. I express my deep honor to the soul of Bangabandhu and all those brutally killed on August 15, 
1975 and wish their soul rest in eternal peace joy bangla thank you thank you dr mustafa i'd now like to introduce our special guest senior secretary of the local government division mr helal uddin ahmed to give your remarks sir the floor is yours okay thank you very much can you hear me yes we can hear you yes. thank you very much bismillahir rahmanir rahim assalamu alaikum uh, two days on open air uh, chief guest uh, mr mohammed tajul islam uh, mp uh, honorable minister ministry of local government uh, and that means the lgrd and cooperative uh, two days uh, uh, keynote speaker justice mohammad rajaul hasan honorable judge the high court division and special guest uh, dr engineer gulam mustafa chairman dhaka washa at the same time the guest of honor uh, is excellency ambassador of nepal and high commissioner of sri lanka to bangladesh and at the same time uh, i welcome to director uh, asian development bank and uh, country director uh, fd bangladesh and res a respected guest and uh, two days uh, uh, president uh, of the webinar uh, mr taskin khan managing director uh, of uh, dhaka washa at the beginning i would like to express my profound respects to the father of the nation bangabandhu sheikh mujibur rahman and the uh, matred families with the bangabandhu on the black night of august 15 Uh, 1915 1975 first of all i like to thanks uh, to key note speaker uh, justice mohammad rajaul hasan honorable judge uh, high court division uh, already he elaborate describe the vision of uh, bangabandhu sheikh mujibur rahman and the present deployment of our country uh, Bang bangabandhu does not need a separate introduction uh, he was a symbol of excellence and also the symbolic embodiment of our independence which is an denable uh, sheikh mujibur rahman revered as bangabandhu friends of bengal by his people spent a total 14 years of prison in pakistan uh, before leading his nation to freedom at the age of 51 nearly 10 months of the solitary confinement in pakistan without access to the newspaper radio or television had no fading his energy when it got fired to a discourse of the politics he spoke without notes as he usually did fascinating his audience his political thought fired the shaped by the his dream to building the sonar bangla meaning the golden bengal sheikh mujibur rahman became a pragmatic politician in the pakistan state he was the regarded as the undaunted advocate to the bengali interest from the beginning subsequently he led his nation to rise as an independent country only for the bengali people after the liberation war bangladesh was still a war ravaged country who is at no food no shelter no home for the affected people however bangabandhu did not lose hope rather he said quote we will turn this war rebased country into the golden one in the bengal of the future mother will smile children will will play it will be a society from the explanation let us work together so that golden bengal shine again and put bangladesh was sing single handedly led by the bangabandhu in order to the elevate the country towards a developing country but his visionary activities could not progress much longer his pivotal role to develop his nation came to an end in a diabolical manner 
when he was the pulling a war torn country from the brink of the destruction and building it as a development country. Bongobundu and his family were brutally assassinated just three and a half years after taking power. Though this heinous murder in history, the evil forces wanted to do erase Bongobundu and his contribution for the leading this country forever. On the Black Knight, the assassination did not even spare Bongobundu's youngest son, 10 years old, Sheikh Russell. But it is a pity for them that their purpose was not successful. When the assassination killed Bongobundu and his family at his residence at the Dhanbundi, 32 on August 15, 1975, the rain was falling seems to be a tear of the nature. Wet tear cried all over Bengal, frightened by the weapons of the nation. The terrified Bangladesh was overwhelmed with the grief and suddenness. Although Bangabundu was physically killed, he did not die in the heart of Bengalis. He is eternal. Because he is the dreamer and architect of a nation state, as long as this, has, this estate exists, he is immortal. His contribution to the country undeniable. In the end, it turned out the evil forces wanted to kill Bangabundu and keep the Bengali nation at Bay of Gun Point. But their intention was not successful afterward. The people of the country are working shoulder to shoulder under the strong leadership of Honorable Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. We have already graduated to the middle income country last year and hopefully 2040-41 Bangladesh will enter into the club of developed countries. We hope our international partner will continue their support to achieve this goal. Thank you everyone. Joy Bangla, Joy Bangabandhu. Thank you, Senior Secretary Ahmed, for your remarks. I'd now like to hand over the floor to our chair, Dhaka Wasa Managing Director and CEO, Mr. Thaksim A. Khan, to make his remarks. Thank you very much, Mr. Minhas Chaudhary. Uh, yes, the Honorable Chief Guest, the Special Guests, the Guest of Honors, and the keynote speaker. Actually, I don't like to speak much because now we are all waiting to listen to our honorable minister, Muhammad Tajul Islam. I like to give some thanks and vote of thanks. What I love to say is the beginning that yes, the Bangabundu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman has a dream. He had a vision and the name of the vision was very clear, Shonar Bangla. And what is Shonar Bangla, which was not been spelled out the time when Bangabundu was being assassinated, but the daughter of the father of the nation, our prime minister, Sheikh Hasina, she showed us the road. She showed us, us what is the meaning of Shonar Bangla, and that is digital Bangladesh. What is the meaning of Shonar Bangla, and that is the vision 2021. What is the meaning of Shonar Bangla, that is the vision 2041. And that is the reason why we do have a vision. We learn from Bangabundu, we learn from the prime minister that everybody should have a vision. And we, when we started our journey in Dhaka Wasa in 2009, when the Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina took over, our, uh, 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 took over the responsibility of the country second time in 2009, we started our journey with her. And under the direct guidance of the Honorable Prime Minister, we also wanted to bring, bring a change. And we also wanted to make a vision and to fulfill that vision, vision in line with the vision of the Bangabundu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. And that vision was, to turn around Dhaka Wasa. The vision was to become the best water utility in the public sector of South Asia. And today we are not very far from there. We are fulfilling the dream of Bangabundu. We are fulfilling the dream of the uh, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. And that's what we are adding towards. So by that, I don't like to say more. And we like to once again, thank you very much the audience, those who have been here, I must give a thank 
to 225 people, those who had joined here, including our honorable chief guest, honorable dynamic minister of this local government division, Muhammad Tajul Islam MP. And we know that he is working very hard to make our country a prosperous country, our ministry, as well as I'd like to thank the senior secretary, Mr. Hilaluddin Ahmed. I'd like to thank the chairman of the Hakka Wasa board, Mr. The Dr. Engineer Golam Mustafa. Also, I'd like to thank first and foremost, the keynote speaker, the honorable judge and the honor, your, your honor, we are really humbled and we are honored with your presentation, as well as I'd like to thank His Excellency, the High Commissioner of Sri Lanka, His Excellency, the Ambassador of Nepal, the Director of ADB, Mr. Norio Saito, and the, uh, and, the, and the Country Director of AFD, uh, Mr. Bonesh Shate. So it was our pleasure that you gave a wonderful remark on Bongo Bundu, as well as the development of this country and the development in the water sector, especially in Dhaka Wasa. We are really humbled and grateful to you for your nice comments. We are also grateful those who are present here today. Those, I, 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 I can't name all of them here. Those are the, our, 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 all the office, most of the officers from local government division, the seniors, uh, additional secretaries from local government division, division the all the uh, and senior officers from Dhaka Wasa, senior officers from other Wasas, senior officers from other utilities in Dhaka, also in different NGOs, international NGOs, development partners, excellencies, in the civil society forum, and also a big number of expatriate Bangladeshis, including the from Los Angeles, including the um, Consular General of Bangladesh Embassy in Los Angeles and many other countries. And as well as I like to thank the print and electronic media, those who are present here. By that, I like to uh, give, uh, like to conclude my uh, speech and want uh, and to want to listen to our honorable chief guest. Thank you very much, Mr. Minhaj. Thank you, Mr. Khan. It's my pleasure to now introduce our chief guest, the Honorable Minister of Local Government, Rural Development and Cooperatives, Mr. Muhammad Tajul Islam MP. Since 1996, Minister Islam has been a four-time member of parliament. He has served as chairman of the Parliamentary Standing Committee on Power and Energy. He became the Minister of Local Government, Rural Development and Cooperatives in 2019 and has worked steadfast in fulfilling the vision of Bongabundhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman and his daughter, the Honorable Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. Minister Islam, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, tomorrow is 15 August, very tragic and morning day for Bangladesh. And to show the respect to the father of the nation, Bongabundhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. Mr. Takskid Khan have taken the initiative to organize this virtual event. For this, I give my special thanks to Mr. Takskid. And the keynote speaker, Mr. Rizawul Hassan, Justice of High Court Division of Supreme Court. He has presented the keynote where he have illustrated the whole life history of father of the nation and his vision and intention uh, and the feelings for the nation. So, and I express also my thanks to the Excellency Honorable Ambassador uh, to join in this occasion and give your remarks about Bangladesh and as well as father of the nation and the chairman and all other participants. Thank you very much. Uh, you see, father of the nation, he started his journey of politics since he was a boy. Uh, he, he was a small boy. And from then time, he was working for the humanity, for human. And 
before liberation of Pakistan, he also, under the leadership of didn't time, the veteran leader, he worked very hard for achieving the uh, freedom from British of, uh, of this uh, uh, Bangladesh and didn't time it was East Pakistan. So with the aim that the aspiration of the people of Bangladesh will be fulfilled. That, that was, in, I think we everybody was very much aware, didn't time whole country was submerged of hunger and communication system, education, healthcare, everything was very scarce. But misfortunately, within the 25 years region of Pakistan, Pakistan have deprived Bangladesh and they betrayed with us. And from the beginning, they had started not to show the even respect to the uh, to this province. So, in course of a time, father of the nation, Bangabundu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, realized. Once we cannot be independent, the aspiration of the common people will be impossible to be fulfilled. So, but even after that, he fought for many issues. And as you everybody have uh, mentioned that 14 years he was, uh, he, he, he was suffered jail. And after that, in the year 1970, when the election was held, the, all the people in East Pakistan and including West Pakistan, the majority parliamentary seat he, he had achieved. And despite it, the Dizan government was declined to give the, uh, to hand over the power to the father of the nation. And as we did not have any alternative, so, people's under the leadership of our, our father of the nation, Bangu Mundu Sheikh Mujib Rahman, was unified wholly and solely. And they were revolted against this kind of injustice. Uh, so, uh, as there is no alternative, father of the nation, Bangu Mundu Sheikh Mujib Rahman, in 26 March, have declared the independence of Bangladesh and call all the people of Bangladesh to fought to, to make free the country from all the enemies. The enemies was the Pakistani soldier. And I think it is very much known to each and everybody that 3 million people have sacrificed their life and 200,000 women was registered as they have been tortured very brutally by the Pakistani people. But despite all these things, people did not mean, uh, go back and they come forward and their, their strength was the leadership of the power of the nation. And finally, we able to make free Bangladesh 16 December, 1971. And 2000, uh, 1972, 10 January, Bangabundu Sheikh Mujib and he came power. And this then time, I think it was also known to most of the people that the whole country have been destructed very brutally. And people's only this then time, 70.5 million people was in here. And other than nothing was there. No food, no communication, no industry, no school, no healthcare, whatever the necessary for the people. There is nothing here. In such a situation, father of the nation told, as we have a man, we have a 70.5 million people. So whatever destruction they have they did, it will not be in the Cause we can rebuild our country to fulfill the aspiration of the common people. 
and he have started his journey. But you see, we feel proud. It is our pride that we have sacrificed the life of three million people and the bloodshed whole the country have been blooded. But it was our pride, but it is our sorrow, it is our shame, and it is our fame that 15 August, father of the nation have been killed among with his all family member, his wife, his son, and many other relatives. But the whole the country have been shut down. What happened? And how could it, it could be? You see, just I am giving the small example as because that some uh, foreigners have been connected. You see, in whole 25 years, we cannot cross our per capita income uh, $125 since Pakistan independent. But despite the father of the nation, he started his journey from the destructive Bangladesh. But within the three and a half years, he had able to scale up the country per capita income, just one indicator I am mentioning, up to 277. So this is the situation. 25 years, the journey was started so far, the record is there, that is $59. But within the 25 years, they cannot achieve more than $125. So this was the situation. And so what dynamism, what charismatic capacity was owned by the father of the nation? This is, I think this indicator can give you the some scope to assess him. So, but, and once one journalist asked Bangabundu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, what is your strength? of facing such a destructive situation. He told, I love the people. But when they asked again, what is your weakness? Then he told, I love very much my people. So this was Bangabundu Sheikh Muzi Rama. Wholeheartedly he loved the country. He was dreaming how could change the face of the human life. And he was very much optimistic. Why we country, we the people? Our people is very submissive, law abiding, and very hard working. You can use them very rightly, very properly for the course of the construction of anything else. But why these peoples will, and, uh, will be suffered? Why the life, human life will be such, such a miserable? So it was the history. And many people have a many malign impression about the Bangladesh. But Bangabundu knows it is not true. It can be changed. We can enjoy the better life. So this is why he have taken the risk, he have taken the challenge. And then what happened? But misfortunately, after assassination of the father of the nation, the country have lost its path, its way to go ahead program of the liberation war. So again, after 21 years, we have to face the suffering and same situation, whatever we have faced in 25 years of Pakistan period, and same situation next 21 years, we have to face. Lot of sacrifice, lot of struggle, leaded by our present Prime Minister, Sheikh Hasina. But as she is getting the blood of the Bangabundu Sheikh Mujib Rahman, None, nothing could stop her. And then in the year 1996, first time she came to the power. 
I am a fortunate person. In that parliament, I was the very young parliamentary member. So I got the chance to learn from our leader, President Sheikh Hasina, how she also loved the country and how she, she knew how the fate of the nation could be changed and what thing has to be prioritized. You see, one thing is required to mention here. We were suffering 100, 100 years of food deficiency. People was miserably suffering. And the other time there was, there was a practice not to subsidize for the agriculture. Fertilizer price was high and the custom tariff for the agricultural instrument at imported stage is very high and no subsidy or cooperation is gave, giving to the farmers. So in just from the day of beginning, 1996, Sheikh Hasina told, we will subsidize the farmer in cross-sectional way. We'll give full-hearted support to the farmers so that the, once uh, we have to, uh, we have to grow in our country as a good school supposition country. So at the time, many development partner, especially World Bank, I don't like to hesitate to mention, this is the true fact. I am a witness that they, were, they have taken the adverse state, it was stand and they told that no, cannot give the subsidy for the agriculture. But in this negotiation point, our present prime minister didn't time told, this is my country. I know where I have, which one I have to prioritize. And then by taking the stand against the World Bank even, she has subsidized that for agriculture. And cause of that, within the three and a half years time, the country fully turned off as a full supposition country. Now we are 170 million people are living every scale land. And there is a Bangladesh is a riverine country. And we have some mountain also despite all these things. We are full sub, supposient of food, agriculture, the rice, pedi, whatever it is you mentioned. We are supposient about the fish. We are supposient about the meat and the fruits. I think somebody define it like a, those who very intensively move within the Bangladesh. They like to say, this is a miracle thing. How could such a, very, very unique fruits is also growing in Bangladesh. So this is the actually, this was the actually the dream of father of the father of the nation. He was loving the people, and he, I personally believe, believe from the cross sectional study report of the global. If father of the nation could be alive, then by 2000, the country could be lifted to the level of the developed country, for which our present prime minister have fixed the goal that 2041 will scale up our country in the level of the developed country. So this is the reality. Now you see, Bangladesh 100% mostly that is off-grid area, might be there is some solar, or all other than the off-grid area, 100% domestic electricity connected is there. And everybody, there is no load shedding at all, unless otherwise there is interruption. There's a technical problem, but it's not load shedding. Bangladesh achieved the status of open defecation. I think within the contemporary country, Bangladesh achieved this status. 
fast because of the leadership of Sheikh Hasina, because of the leadership uh, as she hold the dream and the philosophy of the father of the nation in her own heart. So this is why the country has been saved. So this is, this is uncontroversial. There is no, I think, issue is there to make any question about the father of the nation's belief, dream, and capacity. So in many where we have a huge achievement, you see, at this moment, uh, developer partner uh, of FDA, uh, I, I, I cannot recall his name maybe, but I think he have maybe connected. He, he told me just in his today's speech, whatever he have, uh, what he, he, he heard about the Bangladesh when he was France, but after coming in Bangladesh, he have seen the, what is the real status of Bangladesh at this moment, because it is, it is because of the Sheikh Hasina. And one thing more, you see, I express my gratitude to the ambassadors and the development partners as you have given your comments. Besides one thing is required to mention, after immediate of liberation, Father Bhattacharya told, friendship to all, malign to none. That is, and father of the nation, he was not only the lover of the Bangladeshi people, he loved the humanity. He took stand anywhere else in this planet, the suffering and depriving from the justice. And it was the it was Bangabundu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. So it is our misfortunate. We lost him. And, but it is our pride that we got her daughter, Sheikh Hasina, as her legacy. And she is leading the country at this moment. Despite a lot of situation created by many bested groups, our father of the national father of the national bongo bongo Sheikh Mujib, he was the believer of Islam. Our Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina pray every five times. I myself also the believe that, and also I I pray five times. But Father of the Nasrallah optimistically he believed. This is my religion, Islam. I love Islam. I follow the ideology of Islam. But I am a man created by the God who created many other religious people. So I must have to respect them. I should not re uh, dishonor them. And he was leaving the, the congenial environments between, despite of the religious differences there. So in Bangladesh, you see, many other religion peoples are living very congenial in congenial environment. And they are enjoying and celebrating their religious events with the commitment of the state, commissioner commitment of the state. So I think Bangladesh and the philosophy of the father of the nation was a very unique one. And it was a, I think if we really follow the ideology of the father of the nation, the country, really it will reach to the goal of father of the nation, Sunar Bangla. Sunar Bangla was his dream that every people, justice and opportunities will enjoy by all the peoples equally. Now that as you see, industry, I believe, I pray to the God, inshallah, uh, our garment sector is the second largest exporting sector at this moment, but many other sector is coming up. And a lot of communication system 
have been physical communication system have been established. And by this time, I think you are actually, by this time you are, I, we everybody feel proud that the Bangladesh is the country of third world country. But we are, can claim that we are a fully digitalized country. And technology have been risked to the all the remote area. Everybody is connected. And by within this pandemic situation, you see, of course, there is a uh, some death, suffering, equally like other part of, of the world, Bangladesh also facing. But but if you go to compare in com contemporary and global other countries, still Bangladesh is in a, in a uh, compared to them, their successful position. Because of what? Because of Sheikh Hasina. And she is a very hardworking person. And she is working to fulfill the dream of the father of the nation. This is the thing. And now I believe that all the people of Bangladesh believe so long Sheikh Hasina is in power, country will be continuously go ahead. How much our present reserve? You see, once when first time I, I was a member of the parliament, Kibriya Shai was the prime minister, uh, finance minister. When $99 billion was the reserve once, he, he told me. And despite that, he told that nothing to be worried. But now our reserve is almost $47 billion. Our per capita income now is 2,227. But 227, I think, compared to the developed country, disparity is much for the world. As because, uh, I, I don't need to give the example, but because there is a lot of, uh, like uh, Microsoft and many other big shortages in the USA and many other big companies, those are many billionaire are in Singapore and many other countries, but Bangladesh is growing equally. And that now our leader, Sheikh Hasida, in last election, she declared, Amar Gram, Amar Shohar, that is our place, our town, all the facility will be migrated to the rural area. As father of the nation was committed and told no one will be behind. So the keeping the people behind in the village area, the aspiration of the liberation war will not be fulfilled. So this is why the uh, I think now that is in village area, full sanitation, water, uh, healthcare, education, and many other modern service already been penetrated. And there, we are also seriously working. And we are, uh, as I am a, a chairperson of the Our Bliss, Our Town program uh, this of this philosophy, I am the chairperson. So this is why I am also working with the all other ministries. Uh, Everybody is unified. And uh, on the spirit of this philosophy, if we can re, we, we are working how to generate the employment scope for the educated people and for the middle educated people, higher educated people, so that people will not require to migrate in Dhaka city or the urban area. As because all the urban facility is going to be uh, reach, uh, already been reached there. So this is the status of Bangladesh. Actually, uh, I don't like to go more. Uh, I'm taking almost um, um, uh, some few time more. Anyway, so uh, in concluding, I express my heartiest thanks to all of you to join and uh, make this virtual location successful. Mr. Minha Chaudhary, you have uh, you have moderated this one very successfully and 
Mr. Thaksin, as he uh, despited, he is in USA, but he did not forget that tomorrow is uh, 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 morning day of Father of the Nation. And this is why, with that spirit to uh, disseminate the uh, the contribution and the philosophy of the Father of the Nation to uh, outer border to this. This is why he have, have arranged this occasion. So I express thanks to all of uh, everybody, those who are, are connected from outside and uh, mm, all the audience and dias. Thank you very much. Thank you. Joy Bangla, Joy Bangundu. Thank you, Minister Islam. I could think of no better way to close our session today than with your moving words and giving such a vivid vision of how you see your work moving forward. Indeed, it was a noteworthy gathering as we had over 225 participants at our peak. Even now at the end, we have 215 participants. On behalf of Takawasa, under the Ministry of Local Government, Rural Development, and Cooperatives, I'd like to thank all of you for joining us today to commemorate the memory of Bongo Bundu. Our session today has now concluded. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. And the session is closed. Thank you very much.